Reforming the criminal justice system in America has been at the center of the political discussion for a while now. However, the question remains, how do we effectively reshape the police while also preserving the integrity and safety of our communities nationwide? Brandon Bryce is an American radio and television host, a conservative political commentator, and a regular commentator on both Fox News and MSNBC. He joined me this week to discuss how we heal the nation and shrinken the divide. I'm Kevin McShann. Let's have this conversation. So first of all, Brandon, I want to take the time to welcome you to this show, and we're excited to talk about a little uh, criminal uh, justice reform with you this afternoon. Thanks sure. for uh, joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, Brandon, when we look at the uh, current political climate and the role the president plays in uh, addressing this criminal justice issue. I'm wondering uh, where, where you think we are as a nation in terms of police uh, and justice reform, in terms of banning chokeholds and the rest of the debate. Well, I think we're at a very sensitive time uh, in our nation's history. I mean, the problem is that uh, we're talking about, you know, rhetoric like uh, defunding the police, uh, and, and, and racial profiling is we need to get back to community policing. So a couple of things is that I think we're, what we're seeing is there's a disconnect between the cops that are patrolling the neighborhoods and the communities that they are supposed to be serving. And so I always look for positive things of how do we bring, uh, how do we focus on community policing? How do we implement social programs like police athletic leagues as a way that those officers uh, who live in the suburbs uh, can have a relationship with the people that they serve in the cities. I think the other thing is, you know, when we talk about the chokeholds, uh, we've got to understand that with officers, many of these officers in some cases make split second decisions. And so we've got to look at how do we prepare our officers for sensitivity training? How do we make sure that some of our officers uh, who are patrolling, uh, how do we make sure that they are able to assess a situation fairly and justly, and unfortunately, we've had situations like Minneapolis, uh, like Atlanta just recently, uh, where some bad decisions and bad calls were made. And so, but I think to say that we want to, for the rhetoric to be out there publicly, that we want to defund the police, I think it's a bad narrative. And I think it's a narrative that goes against the fact that the police are there to protect and serve. And that's what their job is to do. Bryce says it's important that municipal governments step to the head of the class when it comes to setting policy in retooling police departments because they're on the front lines of the fight every day and that Washington needs to take their directives from local mayors and police chiefs. I'll be honest with you. I'm a limited government guy. That means I don't believe uh, Washington, D.C. should necessarily be in the conversation. I think this is a job that police chiefs and mayors uh, should be at the forefront of this because they are the guys in boots and gals on the ground. Um, what Things that Washington gets involved with, now we're politicizing issues. Uh, I don't think that solves problems. I think that exacerbates problems. And so when we look at police chiefs, you know, let's look at a couple of things. If you look at the Minneapolis case, uh, they literally have a record that this cop has had challenges, multiple challenges in the past. So my question for the police chief at, at, in Minneapolis 
and even with the mayor who appoints the chief and often in, in most cities, is why wasn't this an issue addressed much earlier? This could have been resolved and it wasn't. And so when we really, when we talk who to hold accountable, I don't want Washington policymakers telling us what police who literally sacrifice their lives daily should be doing. I want the police chief and the mayors to be leading. I mean, even if you look at what's happening right now in Seattle, it's atrocious. Those people deserve public safety. And the fact that you've got a, a mayor, and in some cases, some police, uh, some mayors that are playing politics, this is the problem. And so it's time for people, it's time for mayors, and it's time for police chiefs to lead. I don't think Washington, D.C. should have their hands in this issue, outside of the issue of maybe talking about what are the ways that we can change this from ever happening again. But it comes back to the folks on the front line. According to Bryce, it's critically important that all levels of government pull out all the stops to put people back to work in order for us to take a first step in healing the economic, racial, and justice divide. Well, you know what? The, the problem is, uh, I have no problem with peaceful protests. I support it. Uh, I think when you have 40 million Americans out of work, uh, you're going to get protests. I mean, I think the president has got a major responsibility right now. But the other folks, the part of that is, you know, when we talk about looting and vandalism, that's unacceptable and it cannot be tolerated by any means necessary. And so I think we've really got to look at how do we get people back to work? Uh, 40 million Americans due to COVID, how do we make sure that we're looking at and preparing people not just for the jobs of today, but also for the jobs of the future? I mean, we've got a major crisis where now, you know, when we talk about looters and when we talk about the fact that people are uh, hurting, I mean, when you have people who don't feel that their voice is being heard, you get rioters, you get people, you get protesters. And so I think our conversation has got to be how do we make sure that we're instilling programs to keep uh, officers accountable? We have the cameras, and so I think that's a part of it. But it's also of how do we literally get ready and prepare to put people back to work come the fall? Um, these are things that can happen when you have riots. Well, I mean, when you have civil unrest. And do you think the president is uh, falling short of the moment in this situation? And I know we talked earlier about the defunding police debate. So I'm just curious to get you to expand on where, where you think uh, those resources should go in terms of mental health or job training and the rest of it. Well, well first of all, let's be very clear about something. Um, you asked me about the president. I think the president has an amazing opportunity uh, on terms of trying to find a way to get these people back to work and to work to try to find ways to get those Americans whose jobs in many cases are not coming back due to COVID, trying to get those back to work. So I think instead of Washington trying to tell police officers how to do their jobs, what they need to be doing is trying to figure out a, a, a stimulus plan that helps put people back to work. That's number one. The second thing is you, you mentioned about mental health, and I'll be very clear, we got to be very careful talking about mental health and those people who have mental health, because the reality is after COVID, we all have some form of mental uh, crisis around a life-changing event. And so mental health, you know, I think this is talking about the rise of social workers, uh, social workers also being in the police departments, uh, because those officers deal with trauma daily. And so we've got to look at how do we prepare to put uh, and, and make public health uh, the number one issue in our nation and how do we address those people who suffer from public health and suffer from uh, uh, trauma-related crises. Yeah, my final two questions for you have to do with how do you think uh, this situation will affect uh, the way people vote in November? And what do you think is the key to ev everyone coming together to un unify the nation out of, of this situation? So, you know, it's interesting. I think that uh, you got a situation where, you know, if the election were held today, uh, I'm not sure that the president would win, to be honest with you. However, the election six months away, and a lot can happen in six months. Uh, I think the president has a responsibility to first focus on how do we make sure that that economy stays uh, solvent in order so those people have a job to come back to uh, come August. And so I think 
we've got to look at how do we get people back to work, number one issue. The second thing we've got to look at is how do we uh, make public health and mental health a priority for those groups that we often have not made it a priority in the past. And so healthcare, access to quality healthcare is going to be uh, more prominent now than it's probably ever been before. And then the third is we've got to make sure that our policies are not politically driven, but data driven. And so things like making sure, um, you know, people uh, are not contracting the COVID virus or making sure that if there is a second wave that people are prepared, all of those things matter. Of how do we make sure that we get, uh, that we prepare America uh, so that we don't have any more setbacks come the fall period. And so a lot of things can happen. I mean, I think, you know, the problem is, you know, in many elections, it was uh, people were, you know, maybe they were anti-Bush or they were, um, uh, or, or in, in my great state of Michigan, you know, I mean, I, I think people are starting to look at, you know, on the counter side to Donald Trump, whether you're anti-Trump or whether you're pro-Joe Biden, uh, I think both parties at this point have to offer a solution. And so I think the Democrat-Republican perspective has gone out of the window now. I think people are looking for who is going to be the person that can guarantee me safety, can guarantee me a job, and can guarantee that I will stay somewhat uh, safe from a health care risk. And I think that is who the American people are going to select in November. Hey, Brad, and I want to thank you for a few minutes to talk with us about uh, criminal justice reform in America. We appreciate your insights and perspective and want to thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you.